Okay, hi ladies, my name is Jennifer Dabu, licensed acupuncturist with Blue Acupuncture. And as many of you may know, once upon a time I used to be an electrical engineer. So instead of just understanding how circuits work, now I understand how the body works. And one of the key components to our body and to our health is our digestive system. So that's the main thing I want to share with you today. So most people think, okay, if my digestion is good, I'm going to the bathroom every day. But there's so many other symptoms and conditions related to that from a Chinese medicine perspective. So this handout over here is just a list of some of those conditions. Okay? So one of the first things I learned when I went to graduate school is that digestion is the key to longevity. And that makes a lot of sense because what we eat, our digestive system converts that into energy and blood. And if that's not happening, it's like we don't have fuel for our body to work. And as that slowly starts to break down with time, medications, bad eating habits, environmental pollutants and toxins, did I mention stress? Stress. <laughs> then uh -huh. we're not getting all that energy that we need for our self to function. So when I ask a lot of patients, so how's your digestion? It's fine, it's okay, I don't have any problems, I'm totally healthy. But the reality is, is that there's already 60% dysfunction in our body before we feel symptoms. So you'll see this with patients say, let's take diabetes too, or cancer. It doesn't just show up overnight. It takes time before it actually develops. So one of the ways in which I diagnose that for people is something called the tongue and pulse diagnosis. So those of you that have had acupuncture or have seen me, you know, I'll have you stick out your tongue, I'll check your pulse, and I'll see what's going on. So there's three main markers on your tongue that I'm looking for. Number one, I'm looking for if there's any kind of cracks or indentations in the center of your tongue. And that center of your tongue is related to your spleen and your stomach, which in Chinese medicine controls your digestive system. The second thing I'm looking for is if there's any ridges around your tongue. So if this is your tongue, it should be smooth all the way around, which should look like crumbles around the edge of there. So that is another symptom of digestive issues. Another thing is tongue coating. Now a lot of people are trained to brush the tongue in the morning. That's fine. But if there's a really thick coating in there, that tells me you're not digesting something. And that there's a bunch of stuff that's sitting inside your body. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You know what? So like, I would say something. Our acupuncturist, we everyone's like, I can't stand it when she talks during lunch because it's this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, please just get over it because that's what it's, it is with acupuncture it's science. It's yeah. That. If your digestive system doesn't work, then nothing else will work. Yeah. And I'll explain that as we go on. Now, that tongue coating, the thicker it is, it describes a pattern that's called dampness. So, what exactly is dampness? Dampness is like a muddy river. So in the beginning, probably many, many years ago, probably doesn't exist now, that river runs smoothly and freely. But over time, again, with bad eating habits, stress, medications, etc., it's like there's mud slowly being added. So you don't notice it in the very beginning. But as time goes on, that mud gets thicker and thicker, and the water moves slower and slower, just like your digestion. It starts to slow down. So another way to picture it is like the pipes in your house. Have you ever changed the pipes in your house or dropped something down there? What do you find on the inside of those pipes? Gunk, right? Gunk and sludge. And so over time, if this is your pipe, that gunk and sludge slowly starts to close it down. Now our digestive system starts in our upper respiratory tract, so our mouth and nose. So if you're supposed to breathe through something like this, and you start to get that buildup, it starts to close down, and the first symptoms of that are sinus issues congestion, sinus infections, and the things that you normally eat and breathe that can pass straight through your system, they get stuck in all that gunk and sludge, and that's when you start to get allergies. Wow. Food sensitivities to things that you didn't have before, right? Those allergies can be typical coughing, sneezing, but it can also show up on your skin, so a lot of people get hives or eczema or psoriasis, okay? And then as it closes down more, you start to snore. <laughs> and then you snore louder and louder and louder, and then you eventually get something called sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. okay. So those are some things that people don't really associate with digestion. So another thing um, in Chinese medicine, there's something called rebellious qi. So rebellious is means opposite, and qi is very, very loosely translated as energy. 
So with rebellious chi, instead of that energy going down, you're so caught up here, it starts to go up the opposite way. So that can look like acid reflux, heartburn, hiccuping, burping, nauseousness while eating, or even vomiting when it gets really bad. So we want everything to go in, down, and out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 Some of the other common systems are just the digestive issues. So we know that gas and bloating, constipation, diarrhea, I'm so sorry, I know you're all eating. <laughs> but another thing is, is that you can have a bowel movement every single day, and that can just be moving and passing, slipping and sliding straight through that sludge. So that sludge, mucus, and phlegm, from a Western perspective, your body is reabsorbing that straight into your system. So now you're more acidic, you're more toxic, you're feeling tired, you might even start to be getting headaches and migraines. And all of that has to do with your digestive system. And your digestive system here, they say, depending on what article you're reading, 70 to 90 percent of your immune system is in your stomach. So if that's not working, right, and you're not digesting food, you don't have any energy. Right? to fight off colds and flus, to, again, same thing with allergies. So there's a lot of things that go on. Uh, one of the other things, like I mentioned, in the digestive system, it converts food into energy and blood. And there's a saying in Chinese medicine that the blood houses that mind. So what that means is that if there's no blood and energy for my digestive system, guess what happens to my oh brain? <laughs> Poor memory, trouble concentrating, oh, okay. depression, anxiety for some people, and a whole list of other conditions. So when patients come to see me, a lot of times they're coming in for pain, maybe their hip hurts or their neck hurts, or they're really stressed out. But another thing that I almost always see is that something's going on in their digestive system. So that's a key thing to keep our immune system working. And in our digestive system, it's not just our spleen and stomach, it's our intestines, it's our liver, our gallbladder, and controlling stress. Right, who here is affected by stress? Yeah. Yeah. Right? A lot of times when we're stressed, it affects our digestive system also. So those are all things that we can target with acupuncture. And also clearing the sludge out of your system so that those pipes... How would you recommend doing that? Clearing the sludge out of our system. Number one, cleaning up your diet. That's the best way for you to help yourself. Number one, Food that adds to that dampness yeah. is dairy. <laughs> That's oh, what I was going to ask you. What yeah. foods should you avoid? I, I dairy. I was going to ask, like, um, chia seeds, are they good? Because they help they help clean your digestive system. That's what I've been told. Yes. That's an insoluble type fiber. Oh, okay. Is that soluble? Or insoluble? No. Chia seeds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always confuse those two. Soluble is dissolved. You have one minute. I have one minute. Questions? Oh, it's just. <laughs> Talk about my friend digestive enzymes and probiotics. Does that come into that picture? Okay. So March is asking because one of the things I recommend for patients is digestive enzymes, probiotics, taking some kind of fiber, having some kind of green drink if you're not juicing yourself, just to also help with alkalinity. So there are products that I sell in the clinic. So digestive enzymes are important because they help break down food. So when you have food, let's say you're eating a steak, that steak you can eat it, but if your body is not breaking that down, it can't use it for this energy and energy in your blood. Right? You can just sit there and I won't use any other kind of terminology. Oh, right. we can imagine what it's doing. Don't worry about that. So we want to be able to use the food that we're eating, especially if you're starting to eat organic, you're spending a lot of money on your food. What a shame if it just goes through, sits in there, adds more gunk and sludge, and doesn't benefit you for your overall health. So that's one of the things that digestive enzymes do. Yeah, one more minute. One more minute. What, what? You, you see the look of fear on your face. Go first. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, so going back to the foods to avoid, main foods. What do we Dairy. What else? And meat. No, no, no not, not no. really meat. Depends on your overall digestive system. But luckily in Chinese medicine, they're not huge on being vegetarian or vegan. All of, all my Chinese supervisors and teachers, whenever someone would come into the clinic and say they're vegan and, and vegetarian, they'd say you need to eat at least a little, a little, a little bit. Of so preferably, if you're going to eat <laughs> meat, it should be grass fed or meat Yeah, and not a pound of steak every single day. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're saying dairy because of the mucus. Yes. Okay. 
Dairy is very acidic. So yogurt, and cottage cheese, and cheese, eggs. And, 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 and this is why when you have a cold and you drink milk, you get all that mucus and phlegm. Right. So you notice it more when you have a cold. Mm -hmm. yes. But when you don't, it's still happening in here wow. and in here. So what is it in the dairy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's acidic, it just causes a lot of mucus. Okay. It's also very hard for our bodies to break down. Because we're usually low on the enzymes. Who's talking about that? Nobody. Is almond milk good? I just had a quick question. Almond, almond milk, milk is good if you're not allergic to nuts. Okay, cool. Anybody else put their hand up? I am. Sorry. <laughs> 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 she was trying to make most of her minute. <laughs> uh, so, so you're talking about this slush. Oh, okay. The sludge, yes. So when we pass, <laughs> what we pass through. We, pass this, we think the slush is going to it. Is the slush caught in the cilia of the intestine? And if so, what can we do to lift it up so it goes with everything? Come on up. Come for yeah. So, then you know what? Come on, let me try! Come on, let me try! So they come in little pouches. So if we're not going regularly, if we're not getting enough insoluble, insoluble fiber, that food that we're eating that's not being broken down, it stays inside those little pouches. So that can cause infections, that can cause colon cancer, articulitis, and sometimes you don't even really know what's going on. And colon cancer, I think it's either the Number one or number two type it of cancer. It's the most preventative to my mother died of it in oh, 67. Sorry. So, and she, it could have been prevented. So, yeah. yeah. But and has everyone done eating? Oh, yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead please. So, one of the things I notice with patients when I come in, they, they come in and I see their tongue and it's really thick, and you know, so I see that they have a lot of scantness, is that one of the things I warn them is that when they go to the bathroom, right, even if they go every day, that they might notice that it's a little bit stickier and smellier, which is a good thing in the beginning. I know, I'm sorry, oh it's just trying to get over it. But that's your body getting rid of all that <laughs> okay, So, yep. so you want that to happen. Yeah. So I just okay. try to get some Febreze. <laughs> Burn our candle. Burn our candle. <laughs> get some baby wipes. Yes. You want that out of your system. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, okay. okay. Well, I'll, I just wanted to say, so the acupuncture helps that in conjunction with digestive enzymes and eating better? Yes. Okay. Right. Eating better is always the yeah. thing. Drinking right. more water, and eating water. coffee, not eating processed food. Why is it that you're so against water with ice? Yeah. Well, I'm not against <laughs> well, with ice. Well, she hasn't it's said it yet. <laughs> well, our, they say that the stomach likes warmth. So when we eat a lot of cold, raw foods, because we think, okay, let's just always eat salads, and that's okay, but if you're eating it all the time, it's too cold for your stomach. So a lot of people, and I noticed this a lot in LA, because they were big into the vegan, raw, mm -hmm. and my kind of diets, that they would start to not be able to digest it, so they get gas and bloating, and yeah. when they would go to the bathroom, they would notice that the food wasn't being digested. Literally. Wow. Like when you eat corn? No, like I know exactly. I'm picturing it coming so. out and everything. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you for the visual. <laughs> I didn't have the visual until you said that. Oh, my God. Visual. Is that me because we're lacking protein? Which they should be eating. Water? The, no, no, no. The, the raw and vegetables. And because they should be eating it maybe with a little bit of chicken so, and all it's that. It's harder to digest. And so it's it's usually as we get a little bit older and we're low on those digestive enzymes and the digestive system's weaker and then we have a lot of stress, then Can anybody at any age take digestive enzymes? Yes. I've been taking them for years. Well you yeah. my daughter takes them. But I'm talking like my mom. Better to start now. Our digestive enzymes start now. Yes. The same no, thing. They're, they're, different. Different. They're, different. they're different. They're yeah, different. They're different. Probiotics are good bacteria or that exist in your intestines. So they yeah. do help promote and create some enzymes. It helps mm -hmm. increase movement through your intestines and it fights all the bad guys. So candida is a big thing for a lot of people. Yep. That seems to get So that's why you told me to take it at night so it could sit there and really work, the probiotic? Yes. Oh. These are the okay. digestive <laughs> No, are we all on time? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're good. Well, nobody okay, we else. Move on, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Speak to me afterwards. 
I just have to say quickly okay. that Jennifer, the whole tongue thing, I took my daughter in, and I've been a fan of acupuncture for years before I met Jennifer. But I took my daughter in. Not only is she gentle and she was prepared, she had a teddy bear there for her and everything. Um, but I went in for shoulder pain for my daughter and right away Jennifer read her tongue and said, she has insomnia, she's not sleeping at night. I have no idea, because my daughter's eight, she doesn't sleep with me, you know? And I looked at her and I asked her and I said, are you not sleeping at night? She said, no. Wow. So that's something that as a mother, I, you know, I'm exploring that. What's going on? Where is she sleeping at night? And she just, she helped her with her pain and she also schooled me on the fact that she's having some digestive issues. So we know what to stay away from now. It works. I'm glad that you chuckled water. Thank you very much.